Good morning, or I mean, uh, good evening, class. Um, thank you for waiting, and uh, here we are again for our regular uh, schedule of our uh, asynchronous class for this uh, course. As I have told you, the our uh, class since uh, from module five, I mean module four to module six, will be asynchronous, and uh, I'll be consulting with you for, for some clarification or for some instructions and also for uh, things that you need to uh, follow up in our group chat. And then uh, this uh, lecture that we are having, I'll upload this to, uh, to my uh, Google Classroom. Oh no, Moodle, I mean Moodle Classroom. And then you can access this uh, anytime at your own convenience. So from this for this time, we will have a, uh, a straight lecture on uh, uh, module five, which is uh, game theory and pricing strategy. This is the fifth module of our uh, seven module series of our course on in managerial economics. That uh, this particular uh, module will uh, allow us to uh, to uh, stretch a little bit or to move ahead a little further from a purely competitive marketing market structure or market yes market structure and then as we approach uh the 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 other extreme of the market structure which is monopoly monopolistic we sort of have to understand what is going on in between now this particular uh this particular module will somehow explain where it will somehow uh, give us an idea in terms of what happens if the, say, the market structure or the market situation is not totally um, purely competitive? It's not also uh, totally pure monopolistic. So if somehow if it's in between the two, that means there could be a few number of buyers and there, or sellers, and there could be as many buyers as, you ha as, you, as there is available in the market. So that uh, we call this market structure as oligopolis oligopolistic, okay? You have so many buyers, but only very few uh, interdependently related uh, sellers or producers of the product. So to better understand what's what's the dynamics between this in the in the market in terms of this uh, in terms of the relationship between the different uh, supplier or producers, we go into the concept of game theory and how this relates to pricing. Because in the market, the game is pricing, okay? Who gets a good chunk of the profit in the market or who gets a better chance of survival in the market? That's It's all about a, 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 uh, a game of pricing. So that the game of pricing is actually also uh, uh, dictated by what we call as game theoretic situation. Okay. Now, uh, before anything, before any going any further, before discussing also on the introduction, let me just re also remind you that after this module, I'm going to assign to you a, a kind of a month long, uh, uh, shall we say, exercise or I would say a film review. Okay, I'm going to, after this module, after I have uploaded this module, I will guide you to uh, watch a, a movie in Netflix or you can watch it in uh, from other, uh, uh, say, let's say, uh, uh, downloading or search engines, but you can also view that from Netflix, okay? A, uh, we, I will give you an instruction and then I will also uh, assign to you a, a certain, uh, discussion points in terms of how to dissect and also how to understand and even how to emphasize our lesson in the light of that particular movie. Uh, this is actually a movie review, okay? So um, I will, after this lecture, I will upload this YouTube, or YouTube and then uh, uh, upload the URL in my Moodle classroom and you access that 
and you can do this lecture so that uh, after uploading i will also follow it up with a a long-term assignment actually this will be part of your, of your final no? since i have already given you the the first exam now without so much ado we will uh, uh, i will introduce you to this topic the topic will uh, uh, include the first part of the topic on this particular module will allow you to understand uh, the concept of game theory, the types of games, and the usefulness, the usefulness of a game theoretic to situation, and how decisions are made under a game theoretic situation. And then we cascade down the line by applying the concept of game theory on some of the various types of pricing strategies. Okay, there are various types of pricing strategies. Maybe some of you, if if I may ask you. Uh, what, what are the what what kind of pricing strategies have you uh, do you know? Maybe some of you will directly uh, uh, give me the answer that a pricing strategy that is based based on markup. Okay, that we will tackle also the weak. We will also tackle in terms of uh, like what is the weakness or what are the strength of that markup um, uh, price plus markup strategy, and also what are the strength and what are the weaknesses also of this kind of strategy. Okay, so. Uh, to uh, to introduce you to this to the whole length of this lecture, now we go to the some introductory concepts. Okay, now as an introduction, as industry grows, the number of firms operating within within it also reduces. Okay, remember, as industry grows, the number of firms operating in that industry reduces. Why? Because there is competition. Okay, there is competition, and once the the measured capacity of that particular industry reaches the maximum point it will it, it will seek its own equilibrium and the one that survives are those that can really say uh, operate profitably like for example operate at a at a an economies of scale level okay so that means all those that are not profitable will naturally fizzle out in the whole say uh, dynamics of that industry so it reduces until finally there will only be very few say uh, firms operating in that in that industry now the structure of the market also transitions okay the structure of the market transitions from competitive then to oligopolistic and then finally if uh, if uh, if conditions permits it becomes monopolistic okay but more often than not from competitive it it uh, it uh, seeks its own equilibrium until it becomes oligopolistic now that when it is oligopolistic that means to say there are only very few sellers and there are so many buyers okay then the conduct of this kind this kind of market also becomes interdependent what do you mean by interdependent meaning to say each one is carefully watching the 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 strategy of another in order in order to really be able to uh, uh, in order not to be out out outdone by their competitors no in other words you will become more interdependent whatever 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 strategy whatever movement the other will do you will also tend to follow in order not to be to be late or to be uh, outdated in the market so that's 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 how the industry works no? And then uh, you will also find yourself that in in the oligo in an oligopolistic in an oligo oligo oligopolistic market, these decisions that are the decisions that are important in this kind of market oligopolistic market will be pricing strategy, developing markets very important. How you are going to penetrate in a uh, tightly competed, for example, market, and then. The very important decision also is advertising strategy. Okay, the basic tool for this, in order to survive in this very stiff competition of the industry, the very important tool will be game under your your optimal understanding of what you call as the the theory of games you know, or the game theoretic uh, situation. So, uh, uh, with that uh, particular situation, you will have a uh, a situation where you have a uh, a uh, platform where each one of you is operating in a game theoretic format 
Okay. Now, please, uh, please uh, understand that you have to. Uh, uh, please understand that you have to be very careful in terms of uh, really being able to perceive your opponent. Okay, your opponent or your competitor, because in the industry it's a game theoretic situation. So you have to be very careful in terms of how others will move so that you will you'll either follow or do the opposite way. Okay, but before that, you should be able to understand or be able to get the concept of the games. What are the very what are the different types of games? Okay, what are the different types of games? You have overview of game theory and strategic thinking. Okay. These are just but sample of the various types of games. It may not be exhaustive, but it can at least give us an idea of what games, uh, 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 games, what games, economic games are. You no, know? you have one is. I think you are familiar with Tic Tac Two. Okay, Tic Tac Two. Okay, it's almost like a, a checkerboard, and then you have to move your stones there. So, and then the the game is to prevent your opponent, no? prevent your opponent from aligning the stones so that if he becomes aligned his stones aligned with his other then you you are you are done or you are you are you 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 fail in other words you lose in the process okay and then another one is a game of cards we call it poker poker games where you bluff your opponent no you bluff and then finally you uh, 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 catch him in his weakest point but actually, I don't know how to play poker. But I know I know how poker operates. No, catching your opponent in his weakest point. Okay. Another is a very familiar and very rural type of uh, modification of a game. We call it the checker, checker or the dama. No, dama games. I know most of you in this is a game in the barber shop. No, dama. No, we call it dama. And uh, uh, you can. Uh, it's almost like a, a chessboard. No, it's almost like a chessboard, but it is a localized chessboard. No, it's not a chessboard as you have all the uh, the various, uh, uh, let's say, for example, characters. Now, in economics, most common, no? most common uh, games we have in economics are also very familiar among uh, th among authors of economic theories. We have the hawk dub or chicken game. Hawk dub game. You know what is? You know which one is? You know which one is bigger, the hawk or the dub? It's the hawk, right? It's almost like an eagle, no? Flying and then, uh, and then the the thing is, there is a dub. A dub is very wise bird, and he he plays around as if assuming that he can really uh, compete with a hawk in whatever uh, exercise uh, in, on air and whatever whatever exercise in time in terms of really finding for finding for the food to eat now one ex one example in in uh, in this uh, particular situation is they they almost like uh, they, they almost like uh, fly on top of their strength up in the mid air and then flew as much as possible across in between them and flew as much as as much as they can as if they are going to bump each other okay in other words the dub is just like it's just going to uh, like Bluff the 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 dub is just like going to to bluff the hawk of like impending collision and in the end when it is so close and so close and so close the dub will just flew sideways and the the hawk will finally win but sometimes in that game of uh, in that game of uh, bluffing the hawk surrenders so, because the dub is very wise in bluffing the hawk no it's almost like a a a, a, a what. A, a bluffing situation. I remember that uh, operating this hawk dub, uh, like hawk dub uh, uh, game, no hawk dub game. They, there is one one situation in in the Eastern Besides before. One situation in Eastern Besides. There's a small no. There's a small uh, what? A small. Uh, uh, not really that small because that uh, bus company is also operating uh, in Luso, in Bicol, and in Visayas, but relatively. Uh, stable uh, bus company okay that was maybe 15 years ago no, or maybe more than 15 years ago and that 
particular we we, we call the bus company the PABL or the Philippine Eagle Bus Company here in Eastern Visayas, operating practically the entire region of Eastern Visayas and even reaching as far as Bicol, no? already established uh, bus company. Then it operates almost like monopolizing the ano, monopolizing the market, and of course monopolizing as far as big buses are 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 concerned. Now, towards the later part of their operation, maybe about in in about ten years, ten years in their uh, of, of their operation, enter enter the bachelor the bachelor express was still very young then. Bachelor express so. Bachelor Express entered the entered the market of uh, PABL or the Philippine Eagle, and then really competed them, competed them head to head or neck to neck. No, and I, I remember the uh, I remember the, the the words or the 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 tagline or even uh, well the the byword of the Bachelor Express when it tried to enter for the first time in Eastern Visayas that they can withstand. Uh, Blind the road of Maasin, Ormok, or Tacloban, even without collecting fees, without, without collecting fares, for as long as they can penetrate the market, very bold, no? And to enough, they really, the cheapest, no, the very, the very good air conditioned and non air conditioned bus, and newly built, they compete blind. Uh, they really compete head to head, uh, neck to neck with the uh, uh, Philippine Eagle. And the fare was very cheap. So the competition went on for like month, one month, two months, three months, and before anything, before the year, before that year ends, PABL surrendered the game, surrendered the, the competition. Uh, others said probably because of uh, the death of the owner, but actually, it also had it also had experienced a uh, a uh, very injurious uh, losses in the process because they are competing in terms of their fare. And they are operating even, even for example, uh, with only very few passengers in their inside the bus. They will go for as long as they could, they will be able to uh, really outdo the the, uh, no, the the trips of Bachelor Express. But Bachelor Express is very persistent. The final end, the bigger uh, bus company, so the bigger and more and much tested in the market, much the original, the pioneer in the market here in in late day and summer surrendered to a new entrant in the market and this time you can see bachelor express operating but the philippine eagle uh, i think they concentrated on their manila uh, Bicol routes this time so it's 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 a bluffing game no hawk dub game another one is prisoner's dilemma no? prisoner's dilemma what is a prisoner's dilemma game no a prisoner's dilemma is really just a strategy of uh, investigators make me the police uh, uh, police investigations trying to extract the 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 concreteness and the and the more reliable information from prisoners for example you are a group of uh, you are a group of prisoners committing a gun crime a gun uh, gun crime okay maybe there are five of you or there are four of you now the prisoner's dilemma game, game is very effective in that sense because each one of you will be investigated separately. And each one of you will be investigated separately. And in order to, to draw or to extract the real score of the of the of each player, of each prisoner, the investigator the investigator will, for example, say, you know what? The uh, the other the other uh, your other accused really uh, told you, told us that he will uh, maybe uh, uh, he will tell that it, it was you who he will tell that it was you who committed the crime. They will they will bluff the the other prisoner until finally that the prisoner will think did did they really do did they really do that for me or he will make sure that he is going to rescue himself in the process and eventually the truth comes out. Okay, the truth comes out. So in other words, it's a dilemma of the prisoner whether to tell the truth or continue on lying. But the technique of the investigator will really play around the, the pressure tactic of being able to extract the true information by imposing a dilemma on each head of the prisoners investigated separately. So you will notice that 
prisoners, even though they committed a crime in group, they will be investigated. Pro the, right, the proper investigation will be, uh, say, using separate, separate private investigation and applying the concept of prisoner's dilemma. That's why there will always, uh, no, there will always, uh, there, there will always be somebody who will come out to be a star witness because it is a product of prisoner's dilemma also in trying to investigate. When the star witness come out, he will be he will be the whistleblower or something like that. No? So these are the different types of situations which can also get the situations of that, which can also be applied to economic situations. Okay, These are the different types of uh, common games that we can experience in our lives. Now, what is a game theory? Okay, what is a game theory? A game theory is actually a much more general framework to aid in decision making when your payoff depends on the actions taken by by the other player. Okay. If your payoff, kung ang imong ginan siya magdepende kung sa buhaton sa imong opponent, then there is a game theoretic situation, and that is the very very foundation of a game theory. Okay how you are going to survive in the competition when it is a game theoretic situation okay when when it is a purely competitive market you wouldn't really really feel that it is a game theoretic situation because whatever you sell, whatever you sell it is consumed whatever quantity because there are so many of you and the market is so huge okay so the, you cannot feel the the interdependence between each one of you each one of you has no influence in the market under a purely competitive situation. But in a oligopolistic or even oh yeah, in an oligo oligopolistic situation, there are only very few sellers. It's going to be a game theoretic situation. Who it's a game of who can get the most sales in the process and who can get the most customer and who can get the most profit in in a in a way, in a way you know. So that is a game theory. You no. Know? First, before we Dig, dig into the, uh, say for example, the, the important concept of a game theory, we better understand on some of the basic terminologies, no? Basic terminologies. First is, in a game theory, there are players. Or in a game theoretic situation, there are players, okay? There are players, strategies, and also payoff, okay? Now, a player or players are participants or individuals in a game which makes decision. It could be firms, competing firms. It could be uh, organizations or something like that. Or it could be individuals, no? It could be individuals. And then strategies, these are these are the planned of these are the planned decisions of the player. In other words, these are the actions that can be taken uh, in response to a particular situation, like increase price or decrease price, like uh, uh, they uh, for example uh, uh, will ad advertise and will, will not advertise or will advertise or something like that. No, So these are or increased capacity or not increased capacity or something like that. These are strategies of various players. And then each strategy will also correspond to a particular return or we call payoff. The resulting payoff, the resulting benefit or revenue given the actions of the or actions or decisions. Okay, now in uh, in this terminology, the first thing is we are going to be what we are going to see ourselves familiarizing on a normal, for example, uh, normal uh, payoff math matrix. Now, in a normal in a game theoretic situation, we can plot the the conditions in the game by viewing a payoff table or matrix. First, in this table. You can see you have a strategy in this column the strategy here is either to play up or to play down that is strategy also in this row either to play left or to play right okay so these are the the strategies in this direction or in going down or going in the in this column okay those are the strategies in other words those are the actions that each player will take in response to a particular situation. Now, the numbers inside the matrix, you have here 
in, in each particular cell, the number corresponds to the payoff or the revenue that each player can get in a given strategy. Like, for example, if the player plays up, okay, by the way, this the, the, the player that plays in column, we call it player A. And the play and the player that plays in row, we call it the player B. Okay. For example, if the player B, a player A plays up, okay, and the player B plays left, what is what are the options? Player A gets twenty thousand or 10, 10 million if it is in millions, and player uh, B gets twenty. Okay. So that this corresponds to the respective or the corresponding. Uh, revenue or uh, payoff in each of the uh, uh, strategy that they will play. If player A plays down and player B uh, plays right, that means you got you get uh, uh, revenue per player A ten and revenue per player B ten also. Okay, so you will notice that there are negative here number that means net loss, and you are also have a number here which the other one is really. Uh, have a reduction in terms of yield, okay, or in terms of return. Now, we have to put ourselves in a perspective that each player will play rationally, okay? What do you mean by each player, any player for that matter, will play rationally? Meaning to say, as a rational player, you play on certain strategy that gives you the most return. You don't. You don't want to play something that will uh, give you a, a net loss. As much as possible, you play as a rational player, a rational, I guess, rational player. You play a strategy that gives you the optimal return. But the thing is, what is optimal to you might also be optimal to your opponent, or what is optimal to you might not be optimal to your opponent. So these things will come in, and finally, you will converge into, into a situation where you will have to make a definite uh, choice okay now there are two types of uh, two types of games two general types of games one is one type of game is simultaneous move one shot game okay dungan mo pero kausaran ninyo doon like uh, deciding for a price or maybe to advertise kausaran doon pero dungan mo kasi magkauna ninyo ana bali simultaneous move one shot games in, the, in this particular game the player must have the players a players must move or make decision at the same time okay players must decide without the knowledge of the decision made by the other player in other words you have to just to size up your players uh, move and then eventually you uh, play all together at the same time let's see who gets most of the profit okay okay another one is one shot means the game is played once. Okay, the game is played once, and you will see who who, who wins in the process by in that particular uh, one shot games. So it is really, it is really that uh, kind of game. And the other type of game is we call it the same sequential move games, meaning to say that the game is played several times, sequential move here, and then the next, um, for example. Uh, round one, round two, or something like that. No sequential. You cannot play round two without playing round one or something like that. The player must move and make decision after the opponent has made a move. Pag moves opponent, yes, money yang move. Kanya po ako or something like that. Players must observe what the opponent is doing and determine his course of action given the move of the other. Okay, just like a chess. When you play chess, <coughs> what will you do? You watch his movement. Sometimes you, when you are, when you can already predict his movement, you will uh, what? You will estimate his movement, or you will estimate your move. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> or you can imagine your move, maybe, or you you can imagine your strategy five moves ahead, or even ten moves ahead, no? Because you are already predicting something, no? Players must observe what the opponent is doing and determine his course of action given the move of the other okay so that's how chess operates you watch his move and then you counter that move okay so 
Uh, that that's how a sequential move games is done. Now, in in sequential move games, player must move and make decisions after the opponent has made a move. Player must observe what the opponents are doing. That's very important in in a sequential move. No, now simultaneous move one shot game. By the way, no simultaneous move one shot game. By the way is the most relevant to managerial decisions, okay? You cannot be in under waiting all the time. You have to re initiate something that will uh, that will uh, preclude competition. You have to move some into something. You have to move in into something that somehow that will uh, caught your opponent flat-footed, you know? catch them by, uh, by catch, catch them by surprise, okay? Catch them by surprise. So in other words, simultaneous move is almost like what is more relevant in the in, in the managerial situation. Deciding without the knowledge of other player is the essence of this game. Okay, you just have to you just have some 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 uh, like for example uh, imagination. Uh, if if somebody if something uh, goes on in the economy, some uh, something is going on in the economy. Each of this firm will think about what to do with their products. Okay, so that means you either parang bulaga bulaga on mo bulaga in mo yung opponent mo. No, you will you will surprise your opponent, and before before anything else, you are ahead in the market already. Okay, you are ahead in the market already, or maybe your opponent will do something else to you know divert customers. Deciding without the knowledge of the player. This is important to managers making decisions in an environment of interdependence. Okay? In an environment of interdependence, you just have to size up your player. I think this is going to be their move. Okay? I think this opponent will do this if I will do this. So I'll do this. Okay? And then to their surprise, they will follow you if they see it is more logical. No? Or... They, they otherwise they will run the risk of losing market share so it's something like that sometimes they do thing first and then you somehow also move in their direction okay simultaneous move one shot game is the most relevant in the market now in in a game theoretic situation especially simultaneous move one shot game okay there are theoretical scaffolds that we need to understand or we need to be found to be aware no there are theoretical scaffolds one is defining we define the theoretical basis the first is we define the following a strategy from a simultaneous one shot game what is a strategy okay what is a strategy a strategy is a decision rule that describes the action of the player will take at each decision point okay money strategy decision rule that describes the action of the player yeah there is also what we call as another uh, as a concept we call nor normal form game normal form game is a representation of the game indicating players their possible strategies and the payoff resulting from alternative strategies resulting from alternative strategies so that means to say uh, there is a, a normal form game is there is a uh, there is your strategy and there is your payoff in that particular matrix how how how, how can you how can you do that well this payoff are actually uh, based on research okay based on research you already you should be baby you should be very familiar about the industry dynamic so that you already have at least an estimate of the payoff of your opponent and even yours you know already how much are you going to gain if you decrease price if you advertise if you get this endorser or something like that okay now for example who would have thought that when in uh, in the in the business of feminine hygiene no? before in the business of feminine hygiene no? It was dominated by lactacid. It was dominated by lactacid. In the early in the earlier years of 
get, having a concept of uh, commercializing feminine hygiene, feminine wa feminine hygiene wash. No? So Lactacid was uh, very, very confident that they are dominant the market. They even went to the extent of becoming a prescription, uh, you know, a prescription product. The doctor will prescribe uh, Lactacid for women uh, after uh, for cleansing after menstruation or something like that. No, so. They were, they were very dominant. Now, they weren't aware that their competitor, PH Care, the PH Care, their competitor, used the endorsement of like Sharon Conetta, very famous no? actress. But they were very confident. They, uh, you know, they were so sure that nobody can compete, compete them because they have become a prescription uh, product already. But they did not know that the move of PH care under Unilever, no, the move this eroded the market share of lactacin, the very powerful endorser, and they they followed through, but very late in the market already. They also use another endorser. Okay? They also use another endorser, but <coughs> already becoming late in the market. So it's it's really something that uh, caught your opponent flat-footed or by surprise that <coughs> makes you more <coughs> relevant in the market okay so normal form game or the strategy uh, I know the, the strategy now given a normal form game we have player a and player B with their strategies for player a and strategies for player B and then they have their payoff this one are the payoff okay <coughs> and then we see how the games will 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 play no if you are given this kind of data okay <coughs> sorry if you are given this kind of <coughs> data there will be question uh, posed to you for example what are the strategies in each player for example these are the uh, what are the strategies okay these are some of the questions what are the payoff for each player? Okay. And what is the dominant strategy? Okay. For player A or player B. Okay. Going back to the table. In terms of strategies, for player A, you have up and down. For player B, you have left to right or left and right. Those are the strategies. No? Now, what are the payoff for each player? Now, the payoff for each player is that uh, for for player A, if, if player A plays uh, up and player B plays left, you have player A gets 10 and player B gets 20. Uh, likewise, if player A plays down and then player B <clears throat> plays right, player A gets 10 and player B gets 10 also. So these are the these are the various strategies and so on. And you can also read what happens, what is going on in the other uh, diagonal. No? So <clears throat> these are the how to read the table. So the next question is, what is the dominant or, op, or the, what is the optimal or dominant strategy of A or B? Dominant strategy. First, we need to understand what do we mean by a dominant strategy. Okay. What do you mean by a dominant strategy? No. In a game theoretic, let me bring you this. No. In a game theoretic situation, it is essential to know the optimal strategy. <clears throat> what is an optimal strategy? In other words, the the optimal meaning to say the 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 likely strategy that the player will play. Okay, the likely meaning to say as a rational person, <clears throat> the likely uh, strategy would be the strategy that will give you the most payoff. That is to be rational. <laughs> so that is how the game should be analyzed. No? Depending on the nature of the game, we can characterize the optimum by a situation involving a dominant strategy. Okay? Kung yung asay optimal, mangita jung ka o naabay dominant strategy. Okay? 
that means to say <coughs> dominant strategy always in most cases and always okay the optimal strategy or is always found in the dominant strategy a dominant strategy is the strategy that gives the player the highest payoff not a dominant strategy simply anusha rational it's rational for a person or somebody to play to put your resources in something that gives you the most return okay so that is a that is a dominant a strategy no so let's see if we can pinpoint a dominant a dominant strategy you know, what is a dominant strategy a dominant strategy again by as a review it's a strategy that results in the highest payoff to a player <coughs> regardless of the opponent's action okay now if you see that there is a dominant strategy of the player you what's out for that no so you have uh, uh, to see that uh, given going back to the table no? going back to the <coughs> to the table this one this payoff here and here so we will see we will try to answer this the following question okay in the game illustrated in that figure here figure two in the game illustrated the dominant strategy is for player a is up verify does b has a dominant strategy okay the <coughs> the for player a okay for player a the dominant strategy is to play up okay play up good okay he will get all this i uh, know all this uh, return okay and then uh does b also have a dominant strategy okay we'll see <coughs> now by dominant strategy and b now uh if he plays left or play uh, right okay now <coughs> for dominant for player b what is the highest payoff that he gets 20 right if he plays right he will only get eight or ten okay he will get only eight or ten that means to say the dominant strategy also of player b is to play left because the player and player b has to play up also because this is up to where at least uh he has he will get a fair return no and, uh, by by play and of course uh, player B will not uh, play this because he will get a what a uh, a uh, you say for example uh, uh, like a lower uh, payoff no lower payoff that is eight only so that is how to pinpoint a, a dominant strategy the in the game illustrated there the player A plays up and of course player B has also a dominant strategy in there so always check if you're if you have a dominant strategy if you have then play it no and awang na abay dominant strategy mo din ay bantayan nimo sa imong opponent pod no now given again the table let's go to another very interesting concept okay in the case of in the case of dominant strategy Okay, in case, in case a dominant strategy is absent, what will the, what will the, what, what will the uh, player do? In case the domina, dominant strategy is absent, the player plays a secure strategy. Panigurado ba na strategy? A strategy that guarantees highest payoff given the worst possible scenario. Okay? Almost like loss minimization or uh, uh, profit minimization or something not necessarily can get the maximum profit but at least you minimize the damage a secure strategy and of course when uh, when we say secure as a rational as a rational person again you do something 
which minimizes damage. Or you do something which can at least uh, gives you a, uh, give you a a fair rate of return or break even if it is really difficult. No? Something like that. The principle when playing when playing a game, always put yourself in the rival's shoes. Okay, always put yourself in the rival's shoes. If you don't have a dominant strategy, see if your rival has has, then anticipate it. Okay, pag tanan mo sa payoff matrix, if you have a dominant strategy and your opponent also has a dominant strategy, watch for his dominant strategy. Okay, ato gina share dito, gravitate. Each player will always gravitate into his dominant strategy, so that what if there he there is a tendency that he will gravitate there and go there before he reaches the point <coughs> that point, no? So that you can get in the market early on, no? Now, even this situation, no? there is another concept we call the Nash equilibrium. Okay, if it is. It is very difficult, no? It is very difficult to pinpoint the dominant strategy. Okay, very difficult to pinpoint in the dominant strategy. How will the game ends? How will the game uh, gravitate to a final solution? It's very difficult to, uh, to predict the end result. Now, we, Dr. John Nash of... Uh, the Princeton University uh, economist proposed and also won a Nobel, Nobel Prize by formulating what we call as the, ja, the Nash equilibrium. Nash equilibrium. In case it is difficult to find a final solution for a particular game, then the Nash equilibrium is the, is the end result of that game. Now, what is a national Nash equilibrium? A condition describing a set of strategies in which no player can improve his or her payoff by unilaterally changing his or her own strategy, given the other player's strategy. In other words, equilibrium siya na di nagisang balhin because he could no longer increase his payoff. No ano gina iyang maximum. So the Nash equilibrium, you, you, you have reached the Nash equilibrium as strategy. Okay, so you have to find if there is a Nash equilibrium strategy. Okay, here using the same table, given payoff. So take note of the table, and then you have here what are the Nash equilibrium strategies for player A or B. So let's try to analyze. The answer is to play up, to play up for player A, and to play left for player B. Let's check. No. Checking the payoff matrix above. Player, the Nash equilibrium for player A is to play up. Okay? Kanisha. <coughs> Nash equilibrium, play up. And then the Nash equilibrium strategy for player B is to play left. Let's see. To play left. Okay? Right. Because here, the Nash equilibrium for A is <coughs> the Nash is to play up. Meaning to say, he gets 10, okay? He gets 10. If player B plays late, for sure player B will play this because this one gives him the maximum return. <coughs> so, and he, and this particular, the Nash equilibrium strategy is the convergence point, in other words. Now, convergence point because each player can no longer change or can no longer improve its payoff. Kung magbalin balin pa sila, di na siya maka uh, improve sa iyang payoff. No? Now, for sure, uh, if uh, this one, this is the this is the maximum for uh, for player uh, player A. Yeah, because if he plays up, if he plays up, mo play left man siya. Okay? So, dili pwede mo play Ngaring strategy si A because here di mani, it's no longer thing to player uh, no, to player B and then it's no longer player B will have this uh, player B cannot play this because player B gets only eight 
So player B will have this one. Okay. <coughs> so the Nash equilibrium strategy for both players is to play up and to play left for uh, player B. No, because this one, and if they play this one, they will get both ten. So there is no, uh, there is no increase for player A, but player B will decrease. So that usually, player B will prefer this particular uh, play in the game, play left. So the play, the game converges at that point. Okay. Now, what are the Nash equilibrium strategy for player A and B? Player up and play left. That's what we have uh, uh, discussed. No? Play up and play left. Now, before we, you know, before we go to the application of the game uh, theoretic strategy or game theoretic situation, let me bring you to a particular movie before. No? <coughs> I think some of you have seen this movie. It's actually a biographical sketch of the story of the of dr john nash at princeton university no? the title of the movie uh, was a beautiful mind i think some of you if not all of you have seen that movie and it was uh, 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 the, the it was played by the, the the leading the leading role of dr john nash was played by russell crowe okay so the, a beautiful mind so if you are familiar with the movie let me refresh your memory and bring you to the situation where there was a party of all no a party of all uh, like uh student uh, uh, say for example fourth year senior graduate students in that university in economics and then dr janas was just uh, writing his manuscript for several times he got uh, denied but this time He's almost, uh, he's almost certain of getting the go signal of the promised advisor. And this concept is what we, what he postulated as the Nash equilibrium strategy. Now, this particular strategy was applied gigamit ni John Nash, even in courting, you know, being able to win in the, in the competitive, say, dynamics of courtship. Nanguyab siya, nangulitaw siya sa iyang, who, who became his wife eventually, no? Now, the situation was, was that there was a party and in the dance floor, okay, his wife, that, who was a student then, has so many suitors also, so many uh, bachelors who are willing to get the first uh, piece of the dance. To dance with his, with his uh, fiance, with this, with his, uh, with that girl who became his wife eventually. Now, Doctor John Nash is very clever. He used the Nash equilibrium strategy. He knew already before the six started. He knew already that these guys, yung mga classmate, would always have the tendency. Okay, will always have the tendency to go to that particular woman who was the most beautiful among the women in that in that air in that in that dance floor and according to john nash he might not have the chance to dance if there are so many of them asking for the for the hand of that one young lady so what john nash strategized was to go to when he said when the music starts, I'll go to the second best option. And when I go to the second best option, I I think that would be the uh, no, that would be the my dominant strategy because anyway, these guys very clever might also be wanting to get the hand of the lady, the most beautiful lady in the dance floor. So that was what he was thinking. But he was still very clever. At any given moment. If these guys will, uh, no, will uh, go to the second best alternative, I will be quick to get the first best alternative. That was he was already thinking, just trying to test the water, not knowing 
that the guys also, the group of competitor guys in the other uh, uh, corner of the dance floor was also thinking, okay, was also thinking that, oh my, my, my goodness, the, uh, this uh, Jan, Jan Nas will really, uh, will really fight it out to get the first dance of the night to that beautiful woman because he he really likes that girl very much so in order to avoid commotion we just have to get the second best option the another girl that was also what the other other group of men thinking and true enough when the music started all of them seemed to be walking in a direction to the second best janas very quick to very quick to analyze quickly move into the direction of the first best option, which is the most beautiful woman. And that strategy was an application of a John Nash strategy because Nash, they have already, uh, they, have, have the, they, have, they have strategized and uh, analyzed the, the option of the other, you know, the other, uh, the other person. And the Nash equilibrium strategy is to get the, the, you know, the, the most beautiful woman. But, and able to really uh, factor in the options of the other person, John Nas was very quick to get also because it seems to be all of them were walking in the direction of the second best option. And John Nas was already anticipating for that, for that thing to happen, very quick to shift his direction to the most beautiful woman. And eventually he got the dance on that particular, particular night and that woman, eventually became his wife. Very clever application of the John Nash, I mean, Nash equilibrium. And after that dance uh, experience, he finally uh, wrote his uh, uh, analytical, uh, what, uh, analytical uh, uh, digression or steps in being able to really formulate what we call as a, the Nash equilibrium strategy, okay? That is as far as that game that that know that, uh, now in in the movie that I'm going to give you it's it's almost like that no? but but it's a different situation this time it's it's more uh it's more in the uh like the behavior of a of a classical or a typical entrepreneur. We will apply that to an entrepreneur or a lot of decisions that, that an entrepreneur is going to make no. So we'll see how this uh, situation will be applied also. Now, application of game theory to various uh, uh, various uh, decisions. One is pricing, coordination decision, monitoring of employees, advertising decision. Okay, coordination, monitoring of employees, okay, and then advertising decision. How do you apply Janna's uh, uh, Nash equilibrium strategy for monitoring employees. So you know already that people are tending to be late. So you, they like said, put a put a dash line, red dash line on the log book. Everybody would like to be early the next uh, the next office hour because <coughs> they are afraid to go into something below the red line. No. Just an example no? now example in the pricing you have uh, a high price or offering a high price or low price or yes uh, strategy for a strategy for b and then uh, you say what is the dominant <coughs> dominant strategy for <coughs> uh, for uh, player a and player b the dominant strategy will be to play to, to offer high price. And incidentally, this is also the Nash equilibrium strategy because the, each player can no longer improve this by shifting in their strategy, okay? Uh, yes, because you they cannot change it. If player A plays high price, okay? Player B, okay? Player B cannot play high price also. Okay. A player, a player B, uh, a player A, a player B cannot play low price. Okay, because uh, if, if, if player B, uh, I mean to say, if player A plays low price, okay, low price, now they will end up both of them uh, playing uh, 
low price also and both of them will get zero or break even if, if we call it because player b cannot play high price given that player a plays low price because a uh, player b gets a negative return so if player a plays low price player b will follow suit player b will also play low price okay if player a plays high price okay uh, if player a plays high price then he will for sure use this high price also okay because player a cannot be here because player a will get net loss he cannot play low price player a will always play high price and player b also high price that means they, they, this is the Nash equilibrium strategy okay both the dominant and the Nash equilibrium strategy are the same in that sense now application in the pricing for pricing decisions one is pricing strategies for firms with relative market power okay firms with relative market power they have a pricing decision that can be used using this game theoretic situation meaning to say <coughs> they can adapt we call it the black pricing black okay a pricing strategy in which the identical products identical products maybe a tissue maybe soft drinks maybe uh, bath soap or what have you maybe shampoo study in which identical products are packaged together in order to enhance profits by forcing customers to make an all or none decisions to buy okay this is designed to maximize cost consumer surplus for example if you buy one this is the price but if you buy maybe a, a pack of five of that particular product you get a discount of few uh, few pesos and then eventually you get much cheaper to buy in blocks of five you would the, the customer will eventually decide i'll just buy the the one that is packed or uh, packed in uh, groups of five pack of five so that i can you know especially if good for the family I can always uh, save my money or increase my consumer surplus. So that is black pricing. No, you can observe that anywhere. Tissue can give pang putus undangko. You can also see that in, uh, uh, for example, uh, uh, household products like bath soap, like detergent, etc. Like uh, uh, other types of product, even oil, even uh, uh, several others. No. <clears throat> they use black pricing in, pack in groups and offer the price much higher or give a discount for if you buy this one then you will this if you buy uh, if you buy one you get or if you buy three you get additional two or something like that no? or uh, you buy three take one or something like that so that is black pricing okay so that is one strategy if you want to induce the customer to buy more from your product okay so the, the the analytical concept or theory goes like this you have this one if you if we buy only for example if you buy one pack which is 16 pieces here uh, which is 16 pesos and then you have eight pieces so that means to say you reduce the price and buy this much you increase your consumer surplus okay the principle forces the customer to make an all or none purchase so the black down so the customer will say i'll better buy this uh, one pack no so that maka maka discount ko no? so another another kind of say uh, strategy pricing strategy that is uh, uh, for example useful in uh, under a game theoretic situation you have commodity bundling okay bundled price the practical way of bundling several products together and selling them at a single bundled price landline bundled with internet very common okay air ticket bundled with hotel accommodation plus whatever no it's a bundled price you pay this much for a price of this something like that <clears throat> dsl or uh, internet with landline 
airfare with hotel accommodation or something like that. No, other, there will be other. You have a bundled price for buying this software, and then you also, no, you also get uh, several others. Very common this time. You get a uh, subscription of a uh, what? Subscription of uh, like a cable. You get Netflix also in the process if it is possible. No? So the second rising strategy for uh, I know a plan that can be applicable for like uh, this type of uh, game theoretic situation is. A pricing strategy for special cost and demand structure. Huh? Special cost and demand structure. For example, uh, you have observed that there are at early part, uh, even even highway, you know, even even kanini ang sa ano sa uh, like expressway. At rush hour, everybody would want to, you know. Uh, would want to avail of the skyway para pas pas, okay? And then at non rush hour, everybody also would like to travel there is a bus or there is a alternative highway because there's it's very convenient and it's very economical because there is no pay. So what happens <coughs> in order to uh i know provide a uh, a, dis a differentiation people during rush hour line of pressure there is task mahal of pressure and then ang kato maka afford atong ato agi atong dili ka afford aras ubos agi or something like that so you have peak load pricing if say for example uh you have in restaurant happy hour and the non happy hour you see the price of beer there is different during happy hour the beer is expensive, but non happy hour, relatively, and beer comes with a cheaper uh, price, cheaper value. So it's what we call as peak load pricing. Pricing strategy, which a higher price are charged <coughs> during peak hours. And uh, example, an example, during during off peak hours, like for the shake price. And purpose, the purpose of the peak load pricing is to maximize profit, allocate, discriminate customer. Customers who can afford and customers who are very choosy about the price. So if you want uh, if you want uh, so much fun, you go during the happy hour, but beer is expensive. But if you want just to drink beer because uh, not necessarily for a fun, uh, you just go there anytime, not during uh, happy hours. And you will get relatively cheaper uh, price for uh, many of the perks inside the restaurant. Huh? The theory behind is there are different demand structure. The high demand, this one, and the low demand, that one. So they offer a totally different pricing, say, scheme. So at high demand, you maximize the price because these people can afford to buy during that time. At low demand, this one, you get this level of demand and then you get this particular price okay so you get this quantity and the other one you get also this quantity okay so that's just to discriminate the customer para dili sila maghuot dito sa high hour high high demand those who can afford you uh, go to the uh, pricing during high demand happy hours or you those who cannot <coughs> those who cannot afford Maybe do not do not bring your car during during ano, during rush hour. But those who can afford, you go by an expressway, bring your car, and you pay more. No, you pay more. Another uh, pricing strategy for uh, different uh, say different uh, demand structure in market. <laughs> We call it uh, we call it the cross price or cross subsidy. A pricing strategy in which profit gained from the sale of one product are used to subsidize the sale of related. Common the is <coughs> you uh, what 
you uh, uh, you get <coughs> you get a particular app for free. That is just to uh, encourage you to after being satisfied with this product, which is cheaper or for free, and then you begin to think about this company or the, the other products marketed by this uh, firm might be just really very good so just like for example you get a free offer for uh, adobe acrobat reader no pdf reader you get a free from uh, acrobat no pdf reader from adobe acrobat reader free and then if you are more if you are again interested by other adobe products okay other adobe products you have adobe page maker adobe uh, etc no uh, you will be you can avail of that by buying adobe suite okay and since you are so comfortable with using adobe product the developer of pdf then you get i know you get uh, you get to pay relatively pricey uh, uh, pricey uh, value of the adobe complete suite no? so that means to say you get free for adobe acrobat reader but you pay relatively prestigious price for adobe suite in your computer in as a software and that is as far as software is concerned there are also people giving samples okay samples of uh, a certain product very nice tasting samples but after you have tasted the sample, you'll be offered with one pack of complete products from the company, and you get enticed to buy to buy as well the, the particular firm. So that is what we call as cross price Sometimes they play with our behavior. Somebody tasted the product for free and very nice. Once you're offered the other related products, you tend to be enticed already. You, you tend to be, you feel awkward if you are not going to buy the, the, the some other related products because you have eaten already the sample, which is free, no? I have experienced that while riding a bus from, uh, I know, from Manila to Batangas. Nahatag o praying to kanin. Lamikayo. And then, pag abot mo, balik, pag balik, nagbalik, yan na. Yan, nakakao naman ko. Ni, ni Lospito na lang kagpalit sa gandong ko sa kaputos. Para, maano, ma, ma, parang di, awkward, parang di kang palit. Ang kaon ko, ang kampalit. <laughs> so, na, 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 nadali ko ito. So, really, nice strategy, cross price, sabi sini. Kato yung imong ikaon, ang, ang valor ito, naka-imbid na dito sa, Imong paliton ka sa no? So, very nice strategy po, no? It's really just to enjoy the economies of scope related products ba. So, another strategy, pricing strategy is pricing strategies in markets with intense price competition. Grabe yun nga, competition to price. The kind of pricing under the intense price competition is price matching. <laughs> Okay, price matching, a strategy in which a firm advertises a price and promise to match any lower price offered by competitor. Okay, uh, it's really common. The dominant firm, you go there and maybe sell your product, and then, or maybe you want to buy something from that from that store or from that company. And then, eventually, when they offer you a price, they will tell you, "Okay, you did not buy from me now, but go to another, go to another, you know, another outlet." And I'll guarantee you, if they offer, if they offer a better price, you can either buy there or you can come to me. I'll give you much better price. In other words, price matching, no. You match the price, and, uh, but sometimes this will be, you uh, know, this will be prone to cheating, no? 
but you cannot cheat if that company is a monopoly or maybe near monopoly very dominant firm they have the power to price match prices of other you know, other competitor this will tend to create a monopolistic pricing if service pricing service <clears throat> if all firms are offer the same price then it will end up sharing the market so they offer the same price so more like share the market <clears throat> but it will create a monopolistic pricing or price matching something like that no? there are two cautions if we use this strategy one is it is device a truth revealing mechanism for customer not to shirk okay truth revealing like customer mahalap ng inyo barato naman dito okay oh may ng customer ah okay you can go there uh, whatever is the price dito may ako but then be sure that you know the pricing of your competitor okay if you are not if you do not know the pricing of your competitor you will end up losing your customer in the process so that is uh, what we call as the <coughs> what we call as the price matching. The other is using brand loyalty. Okay, you will notice that all sorts of uh, card, reward card, or whatever, no loyalty. You have the SM Advantage card, Konsa Suki card. You have the Gaisano <coughs> Suki card, Prince Mall. <coughs> you have the Petron uh, whatever loyalty card also. And then you have the Mabuhay Miles, uh, Go uh, Player Promo for Cebu Pacific, Mabuhay Miles for, uh, uh, for, for example, for Philippine Airlines. So all these different types of loyalty card is actually brand, brand loyalty. Yeah. You get the point? Yeah. It's really very effective. For example, if for every 100 pesos of purchase you get one peso you will as you as you accumulate purchases you will find yourself getting almost like a rebate rebates no? you have already purchased for example one purchase about uh, ten thousand worth of goods <coughs> so you will get no, you will get a sizable amount of no, really uh equivalent amount of about money that you can buy also in the same you know, for free i i have accumulated uh, points with for example petron to the tune of like 1500 points or each point is one peso so 1500 it's almost like enough for to fill one full tank of my of my car so it's something that it uses brand loyalty and that's exactly what these loyalty cards are uh Effective to customers, no? right? One, I know, uh, one uh, like for example, brand loyalty approach. So, if you I already have enjoyed free airplane ride from the Bau to Manila using my Buhai miles, okay, when I uh, accumulated certain, I know, or free, I know, uh, so I, that free ticket I gave to my wife, so the two of us flew together no and one is free of charge uh, it's only it's only me paying so i get uh, i paid for one for the price or I, I paid for one for the two to travel no buy one thing so that is very common in the uh, air promo comparative advertising of very important no? now the other to induce brand loyalty is you have randomized pricing very common in the airline industry uh, and also hotel accommodation and, and several others no they, they already apply to a lot of products already so they will deliver i know uh, you will notice that they will offer this this much of discount or price and then there is a counter on top of the on screen now you have uh, 30 minutes or five minutes to decide whether to buy this price in a very cheap or not or something like that sometimes you're looking at your screen you almost consume the allotted time already so you will decide am i going to transfer to another 
uh, brand or stay here and buy this one which is very cheap more often than not you are you are going to be tempted to buy that particular offer okay so have a random uh, randomized value of price because if you try the next time you get back to the same web page it's already expensive no? so random uh, price even in hotels no even in hotels even in uh, 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 hotels restaurants or even uh, uh, airlines or bus fares I use that in in for bus fares train fares etc no there are randomized pricing sometimes the uh, I know the Japan Railways Incorporated JR for bullet train, they have they offer for bullet train, they offer randomized pricing. Okay, uh, this much 15,000 already for a price of seven days, all ride all you can, seven days for 15,000. Now, you, you remember that one ride of that bullet train will cost you a fortune, like one ride for this distance, for example, will, it, will, will already be 10,000 pesos. No, so we'll only have 10,000 pesos, and then you have one week. All expenses, I mean, one week, all you can, for 15 or even 18,000 pesos, that's very cheap. So that's what we, I know we we uh, use when we had it this time to travel to Japan. We we get a ride all you can for 25,000. One week, ah, one week, taking travel anywhere. As long as you have, I know, we use that strategy also to buy tickets for, Weekend ticket for a price of this one, I randomize. We get oh cheap. We buy this weekend. So in one weekend, you will reach maybe two to three countries. We do we do, we did that in Europe when we had this travel also there. One weekend la suri suri. Salzburg, Prague, or as long as that is only within weekend. By the time Sunday evening, we are already traveling back to our our ano our base to other lands no? so very attractive people will be going out because of a one weekend ticket no? ride all you can in one weekend so they have that strategy and also we have that in the in the philippines also the, in, in, in our country randomized pricing <coughs> offer you really have to be very careful uh, you, you have to uh, decide quick if you can really just allow it to pass, maybe explore that in another page. Well, if if uh, you have some some amount to, to play around, sometimes you get a uh, much cheaper offer. Sometimes you get much expensive offer. So it's really a game of trying to test the behavior of the customer. In that case, it reduces customer switching to other products because baka mamaya mo switch ka dito mahal na dito but there is really you know there is really a a uh, a uh, a uh, game of playing randomly we had this experience very you know uh, i cannot forget this experience so while we were traveling we had this trip with my colleagues from dabao to surigao city you no know? while traveling in dabao that time you no know, in dabao my my friends in that same I know uh, issue were so I know we're so we're so we're craving so much for durian no they want to eat durian and the price in I know in uh, in uh, Davao city the durian there was like 75 pesos per kilo or something like that 75 pesos per kilo and then we said oh anyway we're traveling going to Panabo or to Tago somewhere there it's cheaper Okay, we went to Panabo, reaching Panabo, we saw it's 60 pesos per kilo. Okay, maybe in Tagum, it's cheaper. Okay, we went to, uh, uh, we passed by Panabo and went to Tagum, it's, I uh, know, uh, 58, oh no, 57 something per kilo. Wow, Tagum. Ah, there in Moncayo, in Moncayo, it's much cheaper because it's the source. So we traveled further and then went to Moncayo. Rich, upon reaching Mungkayo, what happened? We saw the Dorian there, 75 pesos per kilo. Uh, very regretful experience. We couldn't do otherwise because when we crossed the border, Mungkayo to Agusan, Del Sol already, there are only very few selling 
durian there na maybe we were already thinking na ah baka mamaya mas mahal to dito baka mga na lang taaling 75 pesos <coughs> otherwise we won't buy anything at all so it was a sad experience we were uh, my friends were sighing ah, we could have bought much cheaper in panabo or in tago but here you are you are a victim of your own expectation something like that <coughs> <coughs> now the disadvantage is it's costly <coughs> to run a randomized if you are offering a randomized pricing <coughs> it's costly because you use computer to uh, generate a random number of features no? randomized so it's rather costly but if you have all the resources in the internet it's okay no? now the last point that we are going to understand also we have all those different types of pricing strategies the last point is the most common pricing strategy it is because if you have a product this time okay you have developed a food product or maybe you are harvesting something and then you you want to how much is your price people will ask you how much per kilo the first thing that will come into your mind is my cost is this, so I will put a markup on this one. Maybe the ko ng 20, 20, uh, 20 centavos and this is my price. So the question is, is that price optimum? Okay, the question is, is that price optimum? Or is that price optimum as far as your competitor? Okay, maybe you're thinking that ah, I can outdo my, uh, no, uh, my competitor because even if I add 10 pesos to the price, I can still be more, I can still be more competitive. It's still cheaper as comparing with my competitor. Maybe you're right. Maybe you're also not so right or wrong at all as far as optimality of uh, pricing is concerned. Why? Okay. Because in cost plus markup situation, the mechanics is like this. Okay. In cost plus markup. You see, in cost plus markup, you have to determine your cost, which is average variable cost and average fixed cost. You add them together, that is your cost per unit, average cost okay, per unit. Or it could be price per kilo, price per piece, price per bag, etc. No? That is your average cost. Then, how will you determine your markup? Determine the markup over cost. Let X equals your target profit in pesos and q the number of units to be produced because your markup will depend on how much i know how, uh, how much uh, you are going to sell okay in other words x or target profit divided by quantity is the amount of markup na imong idagdag sa imong ano sa imong cost that means to say your price per unit is average cost plus average fixed cost plus x over q this is average price or average profit per unit no? average profit per unit this is the uh, markup already nya pila imong average uh, profit is money imong idagdag o 1 peso dapat ka mo profit so 1 1 1 pod money imong money dapat ang x over q should be one peso so okay so what seems to be i don't know what seems to be uh not wrong but what's what seems to be lacking in this particular formula okay what seems to be lacking okay you have average cost nemo of course computable average fixtures of course computable na nemo okay your target profit is cost is your your targeted Profit. You want to target a profit this much. So that is also computable because that is coming from what your what you expect to get. But what about your Q? Remember your Q, the number of units to be produced or to be to be to be to sell, number of units to sell. In other words, the Q here, wala kay control. Wala kay control sa imong Q. If you can if you are targeting a profit of this much, so you need to have a volume of sales that will 
give you the 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 targeted profit but more often than not you cannot control q in other words q is dependent on the it can be it can be more than what you can expect to sell if you have uh, you expect to sell this much or 20 uh, uh, 100 units and you were able to sell 150 so okay lang what about if you can only sell 60 units so logi ang imong cost plus markup no in other words since you don't have a control of Q, and knowing that Q is uncertain, then there goes the problem of cost plus markup pricing strategy. O makikontrol sa Q, hindi ka kayo maubigyan yung markup, 50 centavos mo yun, 50 centavos mo yun. Sometimes, masubraan mo, sometimes, magamay na po. You cannot hit your target. What is the lesson? The lesson there is, just like your other competitor, Understand your market and your competitor. <coughs> Sorry. A thorough understanding of your market and your competitor will help you in whatever pricing strategy that you can know. If you have a good control and assurance that you can sell this much of number of units, then this is the most direct way of pricing. But if you have no control at all in terms of the number of units, then you explore some other strategy of pricing. Okay, so in that sense, you will have to, uh, no, you will have to uh, like uh, to uh, be to combine all other strategies in terms of pricing your product. The fact remains that you have to understand your opponent, your competitor. Whether what type of strategy are you going to use? It's not the, like fits all solution that you get to use. Cost that might happen. The good thing in terms of pricing, the message here is a well a well understood like uh, situation of your market and a better understanding, excellent understanding of the pricing dynamics existing in the market so that you can price your product in a way that is not only optimum to you, but also attractive to the customer. Okay? So that is, uh, but in most cases, a lot of people will use cost plus markup and a lot of also times, they will be suboptimal in their uh, in their return. That's why in the market you will always see combination of pricing, discounts, um, brand loyalty, etc. No, because it's not always effective. Di makakasigurado ko ang imong queue makuha magyuna nimo. The queue is very elusive because the market is very uncertain. Okay, so with that note. That ends our uh, lecture for this uh, game theory and pricing strategy. Thank you and have a good day.